All right. So today's presentation, first of all, thank you so much for the opportunity to speak today and for all of you for showing up early on a weekend day. Uh, I really appreciate it. And uh, of course, to uh, Stephen Short for inviting me here. He's the, the mastermind behind The Real Truth About Health. So my topic today is how to make aging optional is being vegan enough. And to make this very personal, about 10 years ago when I lived in Orlando, I, I, I went to The Real Truth About Health in person when it was in person. And, um, you know, it, it really changed my outlook on medicine and and health. And I, I never imagined 10 years ago that I would be able to be a lecturer here. So, so this is definitely special for me. And uh, I think you're going to hear some things that you've never heard before that are, that are definitely important. My website is drjosh.com, drjosh.com. And let's start. So my background, as you heard, trained at Harvard, board certified, licensed in 14 states, used to be the medical director at Hippocrates. I have two degrees in biochemistry. I'm not gonna go too nerdy into the biochemistry, but just understand that that's the background. I mean, I, I was studying biochemistry as a teenager. This is a language I love. Uh, I worked at the, the True North Fasting Center in Northern California for a couple of years. So, you know, it was amazing. Patients would, would come to us and, you know, for, for many weeks, they would, would pay us lots of money and all they would do is just drink water. So it was amazing to see that all these chronic, many of these chronic diseases could easily get reversed or stopped by something simple like drinking water. My focus, as you've heard, is longevity and regenerative regeneration education. I'm double board certified in lifestyle medicine and emergency medicine, went to Harvard and MIT. And the I also, I also like to start my presentations with, um, with a summary. If, if you guys get bored or you want to think like, is this worth me sitting through? This, this, these are going to be my conclusions. Eat plants, exercise, avoid processed foods, reduce your stress, use smart supplementation, and specifically we're going to talk about NMN and nitric oxide. Fasting optimize your sleep, track your own health, avoid hospitals, and find a community. And I have my own disclaimers. This, this is not intended as medical advice. Please consult your own doctor before making any changes. If your doctor doesn't feel comfortable with this topic, consider consulting with me. This presentation is not endorsed by the FDA or the FTC. And I am not being paid by the food industry, including big sugar, and I'm not being paid by big pharma. So does being vegan increase your life expectancy? And I believe the answer is yes, it does. And here's the data. If you look, this, this study, uh, or one of the Adventist studies compared vegans to non-vegetarians, and they found that the death rate of the vegans, 5.4 per thousand person years, was lower than the non than the non vegans at six point six one. And why is it? Why why would if you're just eating plants and avoiding animal products, why would you live longer? Here are some of the theories why. Number one, being eating plants, you're going to lower your risk of heart disease, specifically a diet that's lower in saturated fat and cholesterol. Because guess what? There's there's no cholesterol in plants, folks. That can help lower the risk of heart disease. Number two, eating plants will lower certain types of cancers. Uh, plants are high in fiber, whereas animal products have no fiber. Vegan diets are high in antioxidants and phytochemicals. Animal products normally don't have phytochemicals, which have been linked to lower risk of certain types of cancers. The third item is many people if you, if you look at the studies, people who are vegan or eat plants tend to have a lower body mass index, be less likely to be overweight or obese. And this lower rate of obesity is associated with longevity. Number four is people who eat plants have improved gut health. And uh, again, I think that goes back to if you're eating lots of plants, you're getting real fiber, which promote, promotes a healthy microbiome in the gut. And then in turn, will reduce your inflammation. And number five, people who eat plants 
normally have better control of their blood sugar because there's something about the plants when you eat them, it improves the insulin sensitivity and blood sugar control, which in turn will lower your risk of type two diabetes. And then number six is that vegans are exposed to lower levels of toxins. And I can give a whole lecture just on this. We're not, I'll, I'll go over some of the issues, but, but just understand I, I could talk for hours just on the issue of toxins. And when, when I say toxins, what am I talking about? Well, let me just give you an example. The, the, the typical, some of the toxins that you find in meat, heavy metals, plastics, plastics that we, we, all, we all used to and using in our modern society, many of these plastics are loaded with chemicals that can cause obesity, chemicals like um, uh, BPA. For example, you may have heard of BPA. Okay, another toxin in meat, estrogens. And, and that's because guess what? If, if meat is from an animal, a mammal that has sex hormones like estrogen, if you eat an animal's flesh, you're getting those hormones. Pollutants like PCBs, pesticides, endotoxins. Endotoxins are the cell wall of the gram-negative bacteria, of, of the bacteria in the gut of the, of the animals that you, that you might eat. Uh, new 5GC is a sugar that is only found in animals and it's not found in humans, but if you eat animal products, you're exposed to this weird sugar that the body can react to causing inflammation. Heme iron, iron is, is general is good, but heme iron can be toxic and there's heme iron in animal products, but not in plant products. Antibiotics, and yeah, it's sad, the the largest user of antibiotics in our society is um, animals that are being uh, grown uh, and farm that, that are being factory raised. Uh, antibiotics are used to increase the yield. But unfortunately, if you give animals antibiotics and then you, you slaughter them for people that eat, the people are going to get some of those antibiotics inside of them. All right. When you cook meat, it produces what are called heterocyclic amines. Uh, HCAs, they're the blackened area of charred meat. And another, another in the same category are called PAHs, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. It's when the fat drips onto a heat source and you, the smoke can transfer some of these carcinogen, carcinogenic PAHs into your meat. Um, advanced glycation end products, we'll talk about this a little bit, and TMAO and oxidized cholesterol. And just so you understand, this list is not inclusive. There are many other toxins found in animal products. So are there, any, are there any toxins found in plants? Yes, there are, but it turns out the higher up you go in the food chain, there's, there's more and more toxins. And where do people, as an example, an endocrine disruptor, uh, a man-made chemical called dioxins, this is data on this slide from the government, from the EPA, where do people get most of these endocrine disruptor toxins like dioxins? And you, and you can see the biggest exposure is from beef, dairy, milk, chicken, pork, fish, and egg. Sure, you can breathe some of it in the air. There's a little bit in the soil, not much in the water. But if, if most of your diet is from animals, you're going to get a much bigger dose of these dioxins. And it would make sense that if, if you're eating animal products, that the more you eat, you're going to have higher levels of toxins because you are what you eat. And there's a French study from 2017 that backs it up. It basically compared vegans to non-vegans, and it found that there was about a factor of 10 difference in that vegans had 10 times lower levels of these toxins, specifically furans, dioxins, and PCBs than people who ate the animal products. So Translation, you want to eat from the bottom of the food chain, not from the top. And how in the world do these PCBs, these, these fatty toxins build up in living organisms? Um, it's through the food chain. It's uh, number one is over time, these toxins can accumulate in a living system. We call that bioaccumulation. And then the concept that as it, the further you go up on the food chain, you get higher and higher levels of these toxins, that's called biomagnification. And an example of this is with PCBs. And here's just an example in seawater, the, the concentration of PCBs is 0 0.00002 milligrams per kilogram of fat, whereas 
if you're a bird, um, you're going to have a seabird 110, and and it goes up. You know, if if you're a plant vegetable, if you're a vegetable, a sea vegetable, you know, you're going to have lower levels like eight or ten. So again, you want to get on the bottom of the food chain. And I think this is one of the key reasons. I think toxins, because what do toxins do? Biochemically, they interrupt and they they hurt the normal biochemical processes and they stop uh, animals from reaching their biologic potential. So this is what I'm gonna be talking about, how to make aging optional. I know many of you, not all of you, many of you already eat a lot of plants. You know, many of you are already vegan. So is that enough? And my point is, it's not enough. There are other things that you can do. And that's what I'm gonna talk about next. I want, I want to not just improve your lifespan, but also, also your health span. That as you live to a long age, you, it's an enjoyable time too. So the first point I would make is even if you're eating just plants, you can still make the wrong choices. You need to stop eating what I call CRAP, carbonated drinks, refined sugars, artificial foods, and processed foods. We can just call this processed foods. You know, in, in this country, Oreos are vegan. If your diet is mainly Oreos or things like it, you're not going to be very healthy. So just stop it. I know it's easier said than done because in the processed food are high levels of salt, oil, and sugar, which are highly addictive. You know, our brains, you know, evolved over millions of years to specifically crave these things in high calorie dense foods. Unfortunately, if, if most of your diet is high in salt, oil, and sugar, your life expectancy is not going to be good. And the quality of your life is not good either. So, yes, it is possible to be an unhealthy vegan. And, and you know, full disclosure for myself, you know, as I made that transition uh, 10, 10 years ago, um, you know, I, I just thought, you know, it, it's, it's good enough for me just to eat the plants. And I, it doesn't matter if they're processed or not. Well, I was wrong. And um, so, you know, wh whether you make that transition overnight or you take years like me, it's like the point is make that transition. You know, processed foods are not health promoting. And, and here's just an example with me um, feeding my son processed sugar. You know, I feel bad looking at this photo from 10 years ago. Uh, but yeah, I was eating the same type of processed foods. Not good. And, and you can see on the left here is like, yeah, I, I no longer, because I cut out all this garbage, all this processed food, all the, all these animal products, you know, I no longer have, you know, puffy cheeks. My blood pressure is no longer high. I'm not, I'm no longer, you know, 50 pounds overweight. Um, I'm much happier. And I want to be able to share that with as many people as possible. So how does, do things like added sugar cause aging? Well, I've got two examples. One way is that sugar spikes when the sugar spikes, because if you eat a sugary meal, right after that sugar gets quickly absorbed, the sugar levels in your bloodstream will spike, and then it'll cause your body's insulin to secrete, and then you're going to crash. And that, that the spike, it, the spike and crash is not good for your health. Um, the other problem is as you have a sweeter and sweeter environment in your bloodstream, your own body will basically caramelize the proteins that you have and, and form what are called advanced glycation end products, AGEs. And these lead to degeneration and early, early death and disability. So what I'm about to share with you, if, if you had told me this 10 years ago, I'd say science fiction could be possible, but I don't think so. But I can assure you, this is all real. Imagine turning back your biologic clock, and for that matter, that of your pets, if you have pets. Imagine cloning people. I, no, I'm not going to suggest that we do this, but it is technologically possible today. You can, in a lab, biochemically, you can convert skin fiber mass to egg and sperm cells and then fertilize and implant to clone. So I, I don't think this is going on in, in our country, but I'm pretty sure this is going on elsewhere in the world. Um, so I'm, gonna, I'm not going to focus today on cloning people, 
But I am I'm, I'm, I'm going to say that this is very powerful tech, powerful technology, and why why don't we use it to promote life and, and make our lives better? Excuse <coughs> me. So why why is this all important? What we're doing is is tricking the body to slow down aging. Some people may call this biohacking, which is okay. Um, whatever you call it, the bottom line is that we need to, um, I think, promote and look out for ourselves and, and that of our, our families. And I also, I respect people who say, you know what, Dr. Josh, wh why don't we wait? Why don't we wait until this is settled science in terms of reversing aging? Why don't we wait until there's, there are good double blind placebo controlled studies showing that you know, if you, if you take these actions, if you take these supplements, that boom, your biologic age is going to improve, you're going to have more energy. Why don't we just wait? Well, the problem is if we wait for those settled science to be there in 50 or 100 years, I don't think we're going to be around. And, and I think that's one of the driving forces and why I think you should take action on this, not, not in five or 10 or 50 years, but today. So Queen Elizabeth II recently died. Does anyone there know uh, what, what the cause of her death was on her death certificate? If you could just put in the comments, um, anyone know on her death certificate what the cause of death was? And it's okay if you don't. So heart attack. No, it wasn't a heart attack but I'll, I'll show you. And, and we're gonna zoom in here on her death certificate. And it wasn't listed as cancer, you're right. It was, someone said natural causes. No, not natural causes, but old age. And to me, that's the same thing. And I think that's the reality. If we live long enough, whether that's 96 years like the queen did, or whether it's 110, or 130 or 150. And yes, I think that given the new science we have on longevity, 150 is not out of the picture. That the, this is a paradigm shift. Instead of thinking about the cause of death, things like cancer, heart disease, no, 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 no. Why don't we think about it as old age? If we can prevent you from aging, you're not gonna get all these chronic diseases. So yeah, that's not Queen Elizabeth, but it is an example that sometimes you can tell age just by looking at someone's face. So what is aging? Aging is the progressive physiological changes in a, in a person or organism that leads to senescence. Well, what is senescence? <coughs> senescence is a decline of biological functions and of an organism's ability to adapt to metabolic stress. So our goal here is to reverse aging. We basically, and, and, and this has been, this concept has been around, I think as old as, old as literature, old literature has for thousands of years. We wanna find the fountain of youth. You know, there's a story about Ponce de Leon you know, coming to Florida to find the fountain of youth. <coughs> and you can go visit today the fountain of youth in, in Florida here. Yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm in Tampa, Florida currently. So the key is, if you, wanna, if you want a fountain of youth, if you want to prolong your longevity, you want to focus on lifestyle before seeking help in, in a hospital. Things like working on nutrition, digestion, movement, metabolism, rest, reducing your toxins, taking care of yourself. I'm all for people going to the hospital if they need health care. But that should be at the end, not the beginning. <coughs> Here are the five pillars of metabolic health, healthy eating, daily movement, healthy connections, managing your stress, 
and smart supplementation. Only 6.8% of the US have healthy metabolic health. And this data was from before COVID, so it's probably worse today. <coughs> metabolic health and biologic age are inseparable. Some of you might remember this song, My Generation from the Who, Hope I Die Before I Get Old. Well, I, ho I, hope, I hope this too. I wanna live a really long, healthy life, but when my health goes down, I don't wanna be around. So what in the world is getting old? It's a difference between lifespan and health span. Lifespan is the, you know, what's on your, your, your chronologic age. Health span <coughs> is how healthy you feel. And I apologize for my voice right now. All right. Mindset is definitely the factor, first factor here. So it turns out that the first hallmarks of aging actually appear at, at age 25. One of the things that happens is your NAD level will drop. NAD is a molecule found in every cell, which is critical for your mitochondria to function for energy production. <coughs> at which point, as your NAD levels fall, your metabolic function declines. So NAD stands for nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. It's a critical coenzyme. It's found in every cell, hundreds of metabolic processes, you can't live without it. Here's the new paradigm. Most doctors out there are not studying or practicing longevity medicine. We're taught in medical school how to handle people when they're sick, not how to prevent people from getting sick. And here's the other truth. Doctors are not necessarily needed for most of this longevity movement unless the doctors are willing to pivot and change what they're doing. And I hope they do. <coughs> exercise is key. Regular physical exercise can help you in so many ways throughout your day. Exercise will prolong your lifespan and your health span. And when I say exercise, I mean things like aerobic to increase your heart rate, get you sweating. This includes high intensity interval training kit. Also, mus muscle building, strength training. You want to have strong muscles. And then balance. Imagine if it was not acceptable to say, you know what, you're getting old. That's just part of normal aging. Live with that pain and disease. Now, it is true our ancestors... <coughs> We're more likely to die from infection, trauma, and starvation than from old age. Prevention is a smarter approach than the existing disease care system. Here's an example. What if we decided to catch cancer early? What do I mean? There's a new blood test called Grail or Galeri multi-cancer blood test. It will detect over 50 types of cancer in your blood. And if you do have cancer, it's a lot easier to treat if caught early. The disease model is to wait until you have a cancer diagnosis and treat it. The longevity model is do the blood test in a couple of weeks, you'll know, do I have any of these cancers? <coughs> if you're wondering, how do I get this test? You need to find a doctor like myself who's willing to write a prescription and order it for you. Your traditional healthcare insurance and doctor system is not in favor of this. It will, it will probably not pay for this. But my opinion, it's worth paying, paying some money up front to prevent suffering later on. The top chronic diseases are all caused by aging, whether it's heart attacks, stroke, dementia, cancer, diabetes, arthritis. I wanna go over something now that sounds weird, but biological age clocks. We all have different types 
of biological age clocks in our body. Here are five different types. They're not all of them, but these are five different types. And again, I promise not to go into the weeds, biochemistry, but I think it's important that you're aware of some of these. Telomeres are the ends of chromosomes. You want long telomeres associated with long life. Epigenetics are the modifications like methyl groups, a carbon with three hydrogens that can be added to DNA to change gene expression. Transcription is RNA produced from DNA. Proteomics are proteins found in the blood. Metabolomics are different metabolic uh, compounds found in blood and other body uh, tissues, urine, for example. But what's interesting in all these, for all five of these, you, you can now test for someone's age based on these different criteria. And if you told me this was possible 10 years ago, I'd be like, science fiction. These, these biologic clocks were found by accident, but they're kind of cool. All right. So it's, it's, it's one thing to find these biologic clocks, but I think what's more important is you want to reset these. <coughs> and um, how do you reset these? Level one would be if you say go hungry and fast or you exercise, that would change your transcription factors. Level two of resetting the clock is silencing genes like sirtuins with medications like metformin or supplement like NMN, which we'll talk about shortly. Level three, is a permanent change to your DNA clock. All right, and uh, I'm seeing some comments and we'll take comments at the end that, oh no, some people say, um, <coughs> you shouldn't test in advance for cancer or these other things because you know, then you're gonna have too much intervention and in your side effects. And, and those are the risks and benefits, but in my opinion, if I've got cancer, I want to know about it early. It's easier. I don't know any type of cancer that's easier to treat when it's spread further. Okay. So methylation caps, as an example, are placed on parts of DNA to change the gene expression. And it's the same, <coughs> and this is crazy. It's the same type of clock, whether we're talking about people or dogs or yeast, this it is crazy. It's the same energy pathways and it is conserved. It's the same aging. So some of the things I'm talking about today can also, you can also use on your pets. All right. Do different organs age at different rates? The answer is yes. The brain, for example, ages more slowly than the skin. So you have different clocks and different organs in your body. And so how, how can we measure age? Here are some ways. Appearance, you can just look at someone's face. You can do blood tests. You can check for epigenetics, the DNA methylation, as an example. You can look for how many telomeres, the length of your, on your chromosomes. And this is cool. This, this actually just came out in the last week. Uh, it's a company I'm, I found and, and I'm involved with out of Taiwan called My Wellness Reader. And the ability of measuring aging and vital signs through just a camera that will look at your face. You have to take your glasses off, but there's enough information on the reflection of light to measure your vital signs, measure cholesterol, et cetera. I, I just find that amazing. <clears throat> and then there, there are companies that will, will help you do this. Companies like Inside Tracker and Glycon Age Glycan age will measure um, the type of glycosification on your immune system's um, cells uh, that correlates with age. So this is, this is a burgeoning exploding field, but I think this is so exciting. So how do cells measure energy and defend against it? 
<coughs> there are three internal systems. And I'm not going to quiz you. I'm not going to quiz everyone on this, but I think it's important that you know the names and you know what I'm talking about. The three systems are, one is called AMPK for glucose and ATP or energy levels. Another is called mTOR, which measures the amount of animal protein, less is better, and fasting, more is better. And then third, sirtuins for NAD levels and adversity through wound healing. Wound healing is an example where sirtuins are helpful. <coughs> And I think this is one of the most important slides here. Nitric oxide, which is a gas, and NMN, which I'll go over, which is also a small molecule, both activate all three of these pathways. MPK, mTOR, and sirtuins. And that's why I recommend both supplements and I think this is easy pickings to go after reversing your biologic age. <clears throat> Nitric oxide and NM. It turns out that fasting has almost identical biochemical effects as exercise. I don't recommend that you do both at the same time, though. You know, don't, don't go do a 10-day water fast and, and try exercising during that fast. All right, so how is AMPK stimulated? <coughs> One way is through hunger. Another is through exercise, and another is a prescription drug like metformin or a supplement that you can get called berberine. So the key targets to prolong lifespan or health span, we look at blood vessels, mitochondria, the three energy pathways I just mentioned. You want to reverse zombie cells or senescent cells with senolytics. You want to stimulate stem cells with exercise and fasting. And you want to reduce toxins and hormesis. Hormesis is the concept that what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. It's the reason we, if you do it, jump into a cold plunge or go in a hot sauna, <clears throat> you stress the body, you survive, and you're stronger, your body's stronger. This is just a picture of what mitochondria, every cell except for like red blood cells have mitochondria. And you know, hopefully you have hundreds of these in each cell producing energy and removing toxins. You want to optimize your mitochondria with supplements like ALA, alpha lipoic acid, coenzyme Q10, NAD, NMN, nitric oxide, and hormesis. And I say smart supplementation because you don't want to take things, you don't want to take supplements that will actually make you worse. If, you know, if there are supplements in your, <clears throat> if there are toxins in your supplements, um, I'll give you an example. NMN was recently taken off of Amazon, but if you if you studied the supplement NMN on Amazon, two thirds didn't actually have the NMN that they claimed they had. So you you need to look for a company that actually tests has third party testing for what they say is in their comp in supplement. So I think the fountain of youth are these two supplements, NMN and nitric oxide, and. Yeah, I'm not a fan of caffeine because caffeine inhibits nitric oxide. <clears throat> and zombie cells, called senescent cells, lose their identity, their epigenetic packaging, and stop, survive, stop dividing. Senolytics kill zombie cells, which is a good thing. Here's an example, one that I take, called qualia senolytic. Um, you look for one of its active ingredients is fisetin, high dose, but you only do this once a month. You pulse it. You want to kill the zombie cells that cause inflammation. I've got this slide as a, as a reminder to remind everyone, whole plants, eat whole plants, avoid processed food. Adversity mimetics are good, meaning your body, we're not designed to sit around and eat lots of food and not exercise. We're designed to have periods of fasting, of stress, good stress. If, if your body's never repairing itself, if the muscles are never growing, you're going to become complacent. And that's not good. That's not good for longevity or a healthy life. 
important term called autophagy. When you fast or have any other adversity mimetic, autophagy is a way, it means to eat yourself. Your, ba- your body will eat the proteins that are not good, <clears throat> the proteins that are diseased and deformed. It's recycling of, recycling of deformed or aged proteins. Here's another concept. It's called xenohormesis. You want to eat food that's been stressed. You know, if um, you want the increased antioxidants, an example is if you grow your food hydroponically, it's stressed, and you'll have higher levels of these antioxidants (coughs) because of the stress of being grown in abnormal hydroponic conditions. Your goal should be to live long enough to reset your biologic clock as technology is advancing. And this technology is going, is growing exponentially. The Nobel Prize in 2012 was for these Yamanaka factors, the reset buttons, O, S, and K. Um, Recently, before he changed Steve, changed institution, Steve Horvath at UCLA found that he could reverse your biologic clock by two years and people, he used metformin, growth hormone, and DHEA. There are other things that you can use. The key is you're like, oh, well, two years, that doesn't mean anything, right? No, you don't understand. I can re- reset your biologic clock two years to th- today and then do it again in a couple of years. You're not gonna grow old. Your biologic age is gonna be constant or go down. You have that potential now. Every year you stay alive, you get an extra three months due to the advancing technology. Soon you'll get an extra year for every year you stay alive. This is so exciting. There are billions of dollars being poured into this field right now. <clears throat> Jeff Bezos from Altos, um, Dr. Horvath from UCLA just joined Altos, but there are many other companies that are putting billions of dollars to make this a reality. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, David Sinclair from Harvard Medical School, going to my reunion there next next uh, next month. He came up with this book called Lifespan. I, I recommend that you that you read it if you're into reading. It's called the Information Theory of Aging. Aging is the loss of epigenetic information. It's reversible. <coughs> it turns out there's a backup coffee, copy of the youthful epigenetic information that is used to rejuvenate cells. And the interesting thing is, I don't know, we don't know today what that backup copy is, but I bet you will know in a few years because all the research has been done. So what are the best way to increase your NAD levels? Supplement with NMN, which stands for nicotine, nicotinamide mononucleotide. Here's the structure. I'm not going to quiz you on it, but this is a key molecule for energy production in every cell of your body. <coughs> so example of longevity supplements are things like NMN and then also berberine. We mentioned metformin. I, I take metformin on the days I don't work out because metformin has been shown, I'm not type 2 diabetic, but metformin has been shown to, in people, um, make it more difficult to form muscle. And you might say, NMN, what is it? No, I'm not talking about M&Ms. M&Ms are not health promoting. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about NMN. All right. I'm also a fan of technologies like exosomes and stem cells. Exosomes are produced by stem cells, basically a collection of 500 different regenerative peptides. So let's talk about stress a little bit. You want to reduce the bad stress and activate the good stress. But having some stress is good. You don't want to just sit there and sleep all day, every day, and not exercise or do anything. Regular relaxation or meditation cuts in half the risk of obesity. This is a study from 2015. And they looked at things like meditation, yoga, breathing exercises, and, and Tai Chi or Qigong. 
And how are some ways to reduce stress, meditation, breath work, exercise, laughing, connecting to others, yoga, listening and playing music, self-compassion. <coughs> also supplements like magnesium, epigenin, and lavender essential oil are some of my favorites. Keep a journal. Get enough sleep. And um, I'm going to uh, encourage you, and this is unorthodox, I'm going to encourage you all, because I'm trying to stay focused in this presentation can be hard for people. I'm going to actually, let's just take a two-minute break right now. Take a two-minute break and close your eyes. Take some deep breaths, and I'll meet you back in two minutes. All right, we're back. All right. How was that break for everyone? That's awesome. I would encourage you. I would encourage you to do this throughout the day. And even if you don't have two minutes, even just taking a deep breath in through the nose, and then breathing out through the mouth. That can have an incredible effect on reducing your stress. Yep, no, no technical problems. All right. And I agree, sitting is the new smoking. And I feel hypocritical because I'm sitting now talking to you all, but let's keep going. All right. Meditation can prolong life. In 2006, the American Journal of Cardiology reported after an 18 year study that meditation reduced death rates by 23%. And it includes all causes of death, plus a 30% reduction in death rates from cardiovascular disease and 49% from cancer. And, and I agree with David's comment here. You should get up every 20 minutes and look at least 20 feet for 20 seconds for good eye health. And guess what? Your eyes are part of the brain. It's good brain health. All right. Here's a product I use. I recommend it, but there are other good products like it called Brain Tap, where not only do you listen to some bin oral music that entrains you, changes your, your feeling. It also uses different lights. Your eyes are closed, but lights <coughs> to reprogram your brain. But there are other products like it. This is the one I use, but there are definitely others you can use too. One of my heroes in this whole, in this area is called Dr. Joe Dispenza. His focus is stress management and breath work. He basically cured his own um, damage after a car crash and not able to walk. He can walk now through the power of breath work. And his story is amazing. I don't have time to get into his whole story, but he, he holds retreats that are just incredible. He works on measuring people's brain activity and their heart and how they're connected. Here's a, a code for Dr. Joe Dispenza. Take a picture of this <clears throat> if you're interested, because I'm not allowed to put this on my website, drjosh.com, but this is huge, 20% off of him. Um, yeah, take a picture of this. Yeah, he, Sandra says he's amazing. He is. Um, I do not, yeah, I don't, I'm not allowed to put this code on my website. So that's why this is definitely a treat for anyone who can take a picture of this today. I'll give you five more seconds to take a picture of this. All right, let's go on. Oh, someone's asking, where can you order the um, brain tap? You, you can reach out through me through my website, drjosh.com, and I'll hook you up. Okay. <coughs> sleep. We could talk. We could talk for hours about sleep. Sleep is important. Sleep can be helped with by increasing your levels of serotonin and 5-HTP. All right. 
optimism. It turns out that optimism is associated with longevity and vice versa. I am optimistic about the longevity field just because the advances in the last couple of years is taking off exponentially. And also the studies show people who are optimistic about the future live longer. What a surprise, right? <coughs> Exposure to sunlight is also good, agreed. I mentioned nitric oxide. Why, why is nitric oxide an anti-aging longevity gas? It's basically a nitrogen and oxygen atom stuck together. Why is this important? Because it opens up blood vessels. Nitric oxide is actually a hormone. It can have effects throughout the body. It opens up blood vessels. Here's the problem. As we get older, our nitric oxide levels go down. And by taking nitric oxide supplements, you can, you can cause um, your levels to go back up. Where do you get nitric oxide from? My favorite place is green leafy vegetables. Green leafy vegetables. Chew, chew. Because <coughs> there's one pathway for nitric oxide production in the mouth, and there's another in the gut. Here's the problem or the issue. That nitric oxide you produce only lasts for four hours. So that's why Dr. Esselstyn um, recommends eating six times a day, green leafies. Here's, a, here's another strategy you can add. I'm a big fan of this supplement called Cardio Miracle. I've been taking it for six years. I first learned about it when I was in Hippocrates. I was the medical director there. This will open up your blood vessels. It's a powder you mix with water. It'll open up your blood vessels. Dr. Josh is a discount code, but I use this. It's real. I take three scoops a day. It, the, the beautiful thing about this is designed to have a half-life to last for 24 to 36 hours. Whereas when you eat green leafies, it only lasts for four hours. And I don't know about you, but I'm not waking up at midnight to eat my leafy greens. But that might be you. All right, here's another supplement I recently found that's important. It's called Endocalyx Pro. <clears throat> it turns out for most people in society, the glycocalyx, which frankly most doctors haven't even heard about, the glycocalyx buffers two thirds of our capillaries and lymphatics, it buffers it. It protects it from sharing stresses. It protects it from us from getting heart disease because the walls of our arteries break down at the glycocalyx. It protects it. So you want to look at this supplement called Endocalyx Pro. The other exciting thing is there's a new technology, and I've had it done on myself, where you put this laser probe in your mouth and you measure the health of your capillaries. And when I did this a few months ago, my numbers were good, but they weren't perfect. And that's why I started on this supplement. So that, that's why I find it so exciting because with, with this device, it's called Glycocheck. You can actually put it in your mouth and you can see on the screen, you can see your own capillaries and how healthy they are or not. Yeah. All right. The, the glycocalyx you want basically smooth and slick because you're as healthy as your blood vessels. This was a, a British uh, physician from, you know, 400, 500 years ago called Sidenham. He said, you're as healthy as your blood vessels. He was right. You want to keep the blood flowing optimally throughout your whole body. Here's another concept. NAC, N-acetylcysteine, is a supplement that leads to the production of glutathione. Glutathione is three amino acids that, are, that is a master detoxifier. And I, I think one of the important concepts here is that we live in a very different environment than our ancestors did thousands of years ago because over the last hundred years, or 200 years, 
We have all these new man-made chemicals that we're exposed to that our body needs help getting rid of, detoxifying. Glutathione is a master detoxifier. NAC can help you get there. And I don't want you taking super high doses of NAC. 600 milligrams a day should be plenty. NAC, n acetylcysteine All right, then the whole concept David's asking, why don't, why don't I just take glutathione directly? I'm okay with you taking glutathione directly. The problem is it may not get absorbed. In, in, in one of the clinics I work in, I give glutathione intravenously. I know it's going to get absorbed into your system. If you are going to take oral glutathione, make sure it's li lipophilic, meaning surrounded in fat, so it can get absorbed. Because if you just go to CVS, or buy on Amazon a typical inexpensive NAC, I'm sorry, a, a typical inexpensive glutathione supplement. It's three amino acids. It's not going to get absorbed as those three amino acids can get broken down. So if you are going to get glutathione and support that, get lipophilic. And then the whole concept of light or photonic energy is huge. Light, it turns out, strengthens mitochondria. It incre increases the the coherence between the heart and the brain. You know, we all, we all get natural light energy from going outside in sunshine. The cool thing is there are now, um, you can get the same type of energy through something called the Photon Healing Room that I'm involved with, photonhealingroom.com. Um, but you, you, don't, you don't have to go necessarily to that. There are other, there's infrared, uh, infrared energy, infrared saunas, seek it out. I don't care what form you go, but get out in the sun or, and or use technologies like this. And, and, and there's a comment I see here that I, I'm going to address. And they mentioned Dr. Pam Popper, who I, who I respect doesn't recommend most supplements and we get enough with healthy foods and lifestyle. And what I'm saying is I disagree with that. You know, I respect her. I disagree. And that's why I'm talking about supplements because I've seen the data on humans and other animals. If you can increase your nitric oxide and NMN levels, NAD levels, you're going to live longer. Your biologic clock is going to reverse, but you know what? You'll be able to measure it. Okay, um, <clears throat> brand new product service using light, using your camera on your computer or your phone to measure your vital signs, cholesterol level, glucose level, mineral level. This, this is a, a Taiwanese company is exploding. Um, and I pushed them a couple months ago. I want to be able to measure my biologic age just with the camera. They've almost got that implemented. If you want, take a picture of this, you'll get a 20% discount. And you might say, how in the world can I measure, how can I measure your oxygen level just with a camera? Well, <clears throat> it's no different than if, you, if you're familiar with a pulse ox machine where you, um, you, know, you put your finger in the device and it measures the changes in the oxygen level to measure your heart rate. It's the same type of technology, but instead of, instead of using your finger, it's using the face around your eyes. And this is going to be revolutionary. And you heard about it here first today. All right. Here's another supplement that I take that I recommend. It's 15 carbon called pentadecanoic acid. It binds to nu nuclear receptors to optimize your metabolism and immunity increases your metabolic rate, decreases fat storage. It's called Fatty 15. <coughs> you can get 20% off um, on drjosh.com. That's my website. You can find lots of endorsements there. I mentioned Cardio Miracle, Qualia Senolytic, NAC, Endocodes Pro, MetaPower, Photon Healing, Fatty 15. All right. Avoid hospitals. I've, I've worked at hospitals and emergency rooms, 14 states around this country. I mean, I like helping people at the end of their life or when they're suffering. I'm not opposed to going to hospitals. 
I'm not opposed to getting operations. <clears throat> I'm not even opposed to being on medications if you need them. But I don't, unfortunately, for a lot of the chronic diseases we have, putting someone on 10 medications hasn't worked. Adding 11th medication isn't going to be the solution. You want to avoid aging so you don't get chronic diseases, so you don't need to be in hospitals. Okay. Community. I think trying to do this by yourself is very difficult. I think community is so much better. I saw this when I was the medical director at Hippocrates in West Palm Beach, Florida. I saw this at the Fasting Center at True North in Santa Rosa, California, where you're around other people. You're trying to reverse aging, reverse chronic diseases, just feel better. It's a lot easier to do with a whole community. I had a discussion yesterday with another Harvard graduate who's very interested in setting up a community to promote longevity for baby boomers. If there are any real estate developers who listen or watch this and looking to partner, reach out to me at drjosh.com or drjosh at drjosh.com. Um, this is where the future is. On the flip side is if you're aware of a community that's interested in this longevity, let me know, because this is so much easier to do with other people. In the villages, someone mentioned the villages in Ocala, Florida. I love the villages. The villages, to my mind, it's about golf and being outside and being in community, which is great. It's not about being vegan or eating plants or um, being with other people who want to do healthy things to prolong their health and lifespan. Um, yeah, I mean, I actually, I worked in an emergency room in the villages years ago. The, the health, there weren't very many people interested in health promotion at that time. Um, and, and yeah, it sounds like I need to talk to Dan Butner with uh, Blue Zones. Okay. Good ideas. Thank you for the comments. All right. So to summarize, you want to make aging optional. It's key to eat plants. Plants have the antioxidants and the nutrients, and they don't have the bad toxins <coughs> that will lead to aging and chronic disease. Exercise. Exercise is incredible. And I don't want people to feel like, oh, I don't exercise at all. I therefore can't do it. Start. Start exercising. And one of the keys of exercise is sweating. Sweating releases toxins. So it may only take you a couple minutes of, of hard exercise to start sweating. That's enough to start. <clears throat> Next is to avoid processed foods. And the reason for that is the processed foods have all these toxins and they don't have the good nutrients. Okay. Reduce stress. Yes, you're allowed to have some stress in your life, but the, you know, we're, we're not designed to deal with these huge amounts of stress. I mean, think back to our ancestors. I don't think most of our ancestors were up all night, day and night, you know, staring at computer screens. I think their stresses were finding enough food and protecting themselves from animals and other villages. And... All right. Smart supplementation. I've given you a dozen different ideas. The key to start with, I think, are NMN and nitric oxide. <coughs> all right. Fasting. Yes. Fasting however you feel appropriate for you. If that just means skipping breakfast, skip breakfast. If it means only eating one meal, day, one meal a day, only eat one meal a day. If it means going to True North and water fasting for 10 days, do that. Optimize your sleep. 
Yeah, most of us need seven or eight hours of sleep. It's not much to say, oh, I only need four hours of sleep. Well, for most people, that's going to catch up with you. Track your own health. <clears throat> there, there are devices now and companies that will let you track your own health, whether it's through this new one I mentioned, or if you wear an aura ring, or you um, contract with Inside Track, track or, I'm sorry, Inside Track Tracker or Glycan Age. The exciting thing is you can make changes and then see has my biological age gone up or down? How am I doing? And uh, Judy has a good point. You know, fasting is not necessarily an option for people who are underweight, but even people who are underweight can stick to one or two day, one or two meals a day. All right, avoid hospitals. Yeah, again, I'm not saying never go to the hospital, but why don't we focus on prevention of all these chronic diseases so that you can push off the day you need to go to the hospital to very far away. In community, find a community. I love this community of the real truth about health. I wish we were in person together, but this is a good community. Another community I found helpful was Holistic Holiday C Cruise. I, I went every year for like eight years in a row. Um, find or create your own community of people who are into longevity, it's, it's very hard to do this on your own. Um, to reach me, here's my contact information. You can get an age reversal concept. Easiest way to reach out to me is drjosh.com, my website, drjosh.com. And I will, um, I have upcoming events. I'm speaking at a veg fest at the Southern California, September 23rd of this year. I also have an online reversing dementia summit in November of this year. Invite me to speak to your group or consult with me. I love environments like this where I can talk to so many people all at once because that's the key thing. Great, I'm, I'm taking some of these supplements. I'm implementing this for myself, but I wanna share this with as many people as possible. And, um, and Bobby, yes, I did mention the holistic holiday at cruise. And yes, Catherine, I agree. Hospitals are great at acute care, but they're not very good for most types of chronic disease. I agree with you. Here's, um, here's my contact tech information. Here's a QR code. Take this code and I will give you some bonus material in a second after you take a picture of this if you need it. All right, we'll go on to some bonus material next. And I wanna talk a little bit more about blood sugar spikes and how to prevent them. One way is through essential oils that can decrease fat storage and increase your metabolic rate. And it turns out that these essential oils can do that. Grapefruit, lemon, peppermint, ginger, and cinnamon can all decrease fat storage and increase your metabolic rate. And some of you might say, well, I like eating grapefruit. I'm just gonna eat some grapefruit. That's good. I'm a big fan of eating grapefruit. It turns out the essential oils from the grapefruit are found mainly in the peel of grapefruit. And you might eat peel of grapefruit, but you're gonna be missing out on these essential oils. So my, my favorite company turns out to be this metabolic blend from doTERRA. Um, there's a huge problem, just like there's a problem getting good supplements like NMN. There's a, a big problem. Most of the essential oils out there are adulterated, meaning they're taking petroleum and distilling out one or two things. Um, and you may be getting toxins with your essential oil. And um, what you do with these oils, specifically the MetaPower blend from doTERRA, I put it under my tongue, a couple drops under my tongue. I, I look at a mirror to make sure I'm getting it under my tongue. And I do that throughout the day, maybe four times a day. And um, yeah, that's, that's what I do. So, and, and what I was saying is, you, I'm, I'm all for eating all these different things. Eat, eat your whole grapefruit, your lemon, your peppermint, your ginger and cinnamon. 
the problem or the issues we're talking about essential oils, you know, you might need, you know, a dozen grapefruit peels to produce a few drops of essential oil. What I like about doTERRA is on the bottom of the bottle, they've got a code I can look up for that batch, the one, the one I'm taking, to the mass spec gas chromatography to know that this is what it, what it says that I'm getting what it said what it says I'm getting on the label. That this is, isn't just some cheap contaminated petroleum extract of linalool, you know, one of the many compounds in lemon essential oil or grapefruit essential oil. Um, so this is the metabolic plan that I take that I recommend. And then the other bonus I've got for you is called MetaPower Assist, which I take. This helps, I, I take it 30 minutes before I eat any, anything that's, I know it's gonna be a high sugar carbohydrate meal that's gonna spike my sugars. What it does, it has two compounds. One's called DNJ, these are plant compounds. One's called DNJ and the other is called berberine. These are supplements that will help. It won't completely eliminate the spike of, of glucose, but it'll, it'll attenuate it. And the cool thing is whether you've got, uh, if you're doing glucose monitoring with either one of these continuous things on your arm, or if you're gonna use this new light thing to measure your glucose um, just through the camera, you're gonna see that your spikes will attenuate, will, will become less um, large, which in, in turn means that your body's producing less in, insulin and insulin is the aging hormone that you want to avoid having large amounts of. Okay. For those of you who forgot this, this if this works, um, this will get you 20% off Dr. Joe Dispenza. Um, and and we, we talked about, this is more than just one thing. I would suggest doing all these things to make aging optional, but I also don't want you to feel overwhelmed by like, oh, I've got to do, you know, these 10 things. No, pick one, you know, maybe each week do one new thing. Don't feel overwhelmed. And you know what? We're human. I'm human. It took me years literally to figure this stuff out. And that's frankly why we need a community is, is, um, you know, we could say, hey, let's, let's go and exercise together tomorrow morning. People are much more likely to exercise if they have a plan with someone else for reasons of community and uh, you don't want to let someone else down. Um, many of the endorsements I mentioned uh, are on drjosh.com. And then if you want a whole handout that has all, all of my endorsements, you can just email me at drjosh at drjosh.com. And I will send you my whole list of uh, the endorsements. Now, Catherine says, berberine is an amazing supplement, great for psoriasis, agreed. And what is psoriasis? Psoriasis is a, a disease, is a, it's a chronic disease where the body is basically attacking itself. All right, and that's it. Looks like I finished uh, 10 minutes early. So let me open it up to questions. And if I didn't, if you had a comment that I didn't answer, please redirect it. So it's been a thank great you. audience. Yes. Yeah. So thank you very much, Dr. Josh. That was very informative. So um, so you shared all the information about how uh, how to access you. So that that's that's great. So everybody knows how to to get in touch with you. And um, and then also um Okay. Um, all right. So what I want to do is go over how people um, how people will actually do this Q and A and and can ask questions. Great. Real quick. So we do not take questions directly from the chat. So if you wish to uh, ask a question, please raise your hand. If you don't know how to do that, what you need to do is go to the second uh, button bottom from the right. You'll see a reactions button, and you'll click on that, and then you'll click raise hand from there we will uh we will try to you know uh, get uh some audience questions in we have some of our own questions as well and um when i when i do um pick on you i will call your your name please and i will unmute you please state where you're from and ask your question and please keep it uh brief and and on topic so with that said i will go ahead and take an audience question 
and that is going to come from Amy. Amy, please state where you're from and ask your question. Hi, I'm from New York City. Thank you for the wonderful presentation. I'd like to have your thoughts on the supplement True Niagen. Yeah, Amy, thanks for that question. I've I've heard of it. Let me let me just pull it up just um cuz I think it's niacin, niagen. Yes, it's uh N I A G E N <laughs> is how the brand is spelled and True <laughs> is T R U. And also Another speaker had mentioned something about NMN no longer being available over the counter. I don't know if you've heard anything about that. Yeah, so let, let's go over. Those are both great questions. Let's start with your first question about specifically the brand Niagen. I don't know anything good or bad about it. I've heard of them before. But to be clear, Niagen is vitamin B3. And <clears throat> um, you may think, or it may be, if you look NMN or NAD is related to vitamin B3. It is not the same thing. So I am not opposed to you taking niagen or vitamin B3. But in addition to that, I would suggest you take NMN. And to answer the second part, NMN is currently, the FDA has, has said that NMN is not allowed to be sold because Dr. David Sinclair, the famous Harvard professor who I think single-handedly has helped drive this field, he supported a pharmaceutical company that put in an FDA request for a pharmaceutical version of NMN, which I'm not opposed to his company selling NMN and us being able to buy it. The problem or the issue is NMN is not available through his company yet. And what the FDA is saying is, well, we might take all these NMN supplements off the market. NMN, what is NMN? NMN is not the same thing as vitamin B3, but it's related to vitamin B3. It is found in lots of different foods, lots of different plants. And for that reason, I recommend if you like NMN, stock up with it because you it may there might be a time period when it's not available in this country, which is ludicrous because it's a natural product. It's found in plants. So we, we, we can get into it, but um, I'm not opposed to niagen. But when I say NMN, find a version of NMN. The one I take is from England called Zero Not Age, but, but there are lots of different companies that, where you can still get NMN in this country. Uh, Amazon took it off the market. Walmart, Walgreens took it off the market. I will tell you, and I mentioned it earlier, if you look, if you had purchased NMN on the, in the past from a random company on Amazon, two thirds had actually no NMN when you tested it. So wherever you get your NMN, make sure it's third party tested. Because guess what? If there's no NMN in what you buy, even if it's on the label, it's not gonna do anything for you. Did, did that answer your, your question, Amy? Yes, it did. Thank you very much. Sure. And um, thank you for that. So uh, just a, a quick follow-up on, on that. Um, you mentioned that NMM, NMN is found in food and plants. What, what, uh, what natural sources can we get it from? You know, the, there are many. The, the problem is concentration. Just like, um, you know, the grapefruit essential oil. I mean, you'd have to eat a lot of grapefruit peels. Um, I, I don't have it memorized, but... Um, some of the plants that um, have NMN are avocados, broccoli, cabbage, edamame, and cucumbers. Not, not that those are the, are the only five, but the thing is you would have to eat a lot of avocados, broccoli, cabbage, edamame, and cucumbers to get enough NMN to have the type of anti-aging longevity effects I'm talking about. I recommend getting a gram, a thousand milligrams a day of the NMN. But in order to get that much, you would, that would be a lot of avocados. And I don't think eating all that fat from avocados would necessarily be good. So, and, and I know this is different than many of the speakers you're gonna hear who are just, just eat whole plants. What I'm trying to say here is it, whole plants is good, it's not enough. You need to supplement with things like vitamin D, vitamin B12, and things like nitric oxide and NMN. So, uh, 
a question for you. So what you, you touched on some various tests throughout your presentation. What are, what are the most important health tests that you recommend that we get? Okay. So um, I talked in general about the whole concept of, of measuring your biologic age. And you can, if you're interested in what, what is my bio, biologic age, I mean, I, I did telomere testing like 10 years ago. At, at the time, there's only one lab in Spain that would do it. You can now get telomere testing, measuring the length of telomeres. The longer it is, it's associated with, more, with longer age. I, I think a lot of mainstream labs in this country will do that. But my point is things have exploded from 10 years ago. You know, you can go with a company like Inside Tracker, um, where you can do blood tests. There are swabs. You can swab your mouth. But... In terms of biologic age, one of the key things you do is, is to measure your blood sugar throughout the day, whether that's through this new company that I mentioned from Taiwan, or you're measuring just through light, or if you're measuring a continuous glucose monitor, or another test that you can do to measure your blood sugar over the last three months, that's called a hemoglobin A1C. That's pretty mainstream now. It measures how, <clears throat> it's, a, it's one of the glyc glycation end products where glucose will get added to hemoglobin, which is in your bloodstream. So if, if you had to pick one test, I would look at your hemoglobin A1C and, and we use that to, to figure out if you're diabetic or pre-diabetic, but that won't tell you day to day, ooh, I just, see, this is the confusing thing. It's like, for example, if, if I eat, you know, um, five bananas, my blood sugar may not, you know, go up quickly, but Michael, if you eat five bananas, your blood sugar may spike. And, and there's no way by looking at the banana to know that. And there's no way to know it unless you test it. I mean, you, you can look up in books and it'll tell you the, you know, the, the, the glucose index, the GI for, for bananas, but that doesn't matter. What matters is what happens with you and me. And, a lot of that is based on how, how good and how sensitive an insulin program we have and, and how much fat we have in our muscle cells. So I know this is confusing, but I, if I had to pick one type of testing, I would look at your blood glucose monitor throughout the day. Thank you for that. And um, what if you get a, um, I'm not sure if I'm saying this correctly, uh, gallery cancer test? And it says that that it sees something. What what are the next steps? How advanced? You know, like how how early may that cancer be? You know, like is it something that you need to actively take care of? And then, uh, what kind of cancer treatments would you suggest to, to handle yeah. that? Okay, and that's a great question because the the gallery test tests for like 50, <clears throat> 50 plus different types of um, cancers, and we call that a liquid biopsy, as in. Um, it's a liquid, blood is a liquid that you're sending to the lab and they're doing it within a couple of weeks. All right, so what I would do, let, let's say, I mean, I, I mean, I recently had the gallery test on myself and I was negative, which was reassuring, but let's say one of those 50 tests came back positive. What I would do is I would go to, I would go to a traditional oncologist, I would. I would see what traditional medicine has to offer, but I would also go to a holistic or integrative oncologist to find out what the alternatives are too. And the whole point behind doing this testing is to catch it early. And guess what? If this cancer is already in your blood, by definition, it's, it's spread to the point where you can detect it in blood. So for example, if it's breast cancer, I would go to oncologist who specializes in breast cancer, but I wouldn't stop there. I would learn what all my options are because what I found is most traditional oncologists, they're going to go by the book. They're not going to tell you about being able to um, non-traditional approaches, um, some certain vaccines, DNA, RNA therapy. So this is a cutting edge, but the whole point is you know, if you get a positive test, then you can actually take action. And 
what, what I'm trying to say is I have nothing against traditional oncologists, but they, I feel like they operate in a box in that, in that it has to go through the whole traditional FDA process and any new treatments get de-emphasized. Did, did that answer your question, Michael? Uh, yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely a start. I realize it's a, it's a complex uh, question. So um, the, the next question is coming from Cheryl. Cheryl, please state where you're from and ask your question. Hi, Dr. Josh. I'm from Santa Rosa, California, and we miss you here. It's great to uh, see you today. Thanks, Cheryl. <laughs> My question is about raw food diets, and um, I'm specifically thinking about the work of Drs. Rick and Karen Dina on raw food education, which I think you're probably familiar with. And so if I'm 70, I've made it to age 70, I have no health issues, my labs are great, I'm doing a five-day water-only fast once a year, would there be any benefit for me wanting to live to 100 and beyond, um, which I love your optimistic attitude about, would there be any benefit in me moving toward more raw food, like toward high raw or all raw? Yeah, Cheryl, I think there is. I think there is a benefit to moving to towards high raw, and, and I'll tell you why. If you look at the longevity um, studies in general for humans and in general, it, a lot of it is about calorie density and caloric consumption. If you're eating a high raw diet, unless you're going, you know, too much on the avocados and nuts, um, you're the amount of calories you're consuming is going to be limited. Plus, the phytonutrients in the plants, I think, definitely contribute towards longevity. So I can't quote you a study, but even if you go high raw, I still want you to supplement with nitric oxide and NMN. Because I don't, I don't care how many vegetables you're eating, I don't think you're going to get to 1,000 milligrams of NMN every day. So, but, but yes, for, for a lot of reasons, I like, I, I like the raw diet. And um, when I was 100% raw, when I was at Hippocrates for a year, I felt great in my aging, you know, reversed. So, and I saw that in a lot of other people. So, yes, I'm a big fan of high raw and give it a try. Thank you. That's very helpful. Cool. Great. And just real quickly, when you say that you're aging reverse, what are the kind, what kinds of things did you see when you went on that raw diet for a year? Yeah. So my blood pressure got better. Um, I had high blood pressure. It went away. I lost 50 pounds. What else? Um, my stress level went back. My hair and heels grew faster. I mean, I, my depression went away. I mean, it was, it was transformative. And, and, I, and it wasn't just me, though. I saw it in a lot of other people. Great. And um, how much exercise, you, you, you touched on this in your, in your, um, in your presentation, um, but I, I don't know that you really went over how much exercise do we need to do each week and what types of exercise do you recommend? <clears throat> yeah, I, I basically talked about three different types of exercise. Um, one of them is you want, you want to grow muscle. And, and one of the reasons you want to grow muscle is because if you look at what, what causes people to die, I mean, one of the common problems I saw leading to death in the elderly when I worked in emergency rooms was hip fractures. And why do people fracture their hip? They fall. And if they fall and they don't have enough muscle support around their muscle, and if they have thin bones, they, they break them. So one key is you want to build muscle. The other key is you want to um, work on aerobic exercise to train your heart. And then the third one is you want to work on balance. Because obviously, like if your balance is good, you're probably not going to fall and, and fracture your hip. So, so what, what I'm what I'm doing when I'm advising people, you know, wh whether they're young or old, is I'm thinking, okay, eventually they're going to, you know, hopefully get to 80, 90, 100 years old. I want to make sure that they don't get killed by a hip fracture because mortality associated with a hip fracture is about 50 percent after a year um, for the elderly. <coughs> So, so yeah, does, is, does that answer that, Michael? Yeah, yeah. Well, and uh, well, how, how often, often do you do it? How, how, how often is, 
um, because this is a general audience. Everyone here is different. I mean, I'm sure there's some people watching this who are ultra athletes and you may be doing enough, but there are also going to be some people watching this who are not doing any exercise. And the key is to start slow to the point where you're sweating. But ideally, ideally you want to be working out, um, I would say, three hours a week. Um, you know, the studies show that there is a benefit to exercise up to three and a half hours a week. Beyond that, uh, there's no clear cut advantage, but the, the biggest improvements are going from no exercise to 30 minutes a week to an hour. So more is better. The exciting thing that I've, I've seen, um, the exciting thing that I've seen with NMN is within a week or two, my energy level and my, and that of my patients goes up so that, you know, even though we, I may have worked out this morning, I also want to work out tonight. Yeah. And um, I guess the other question is, can you overdo it? Yeah, you definitely can overdo it. I don't think we're designed to run three hours every day, even though there's some people who do that. Um, but the key is if you're not exercising, get started. Um, but, um, and I think it's okay to take a day off, uh, but you want to be doing some physical activity almost every day. Great. Thank you. Our next question is coming from David. David, please state where you're from and ask your question. Yes. My name is David. I'm from the Washington, D.C. area. And one of my basic questions has to do with detox, detoxing toxins, if you will. There's a lot out there and a lot of recommendations. That includes castor oil packs, infrared saunas, coffee enemas, colon hydrotherapy, zeolite, bentonite, clay, chlorella, fulvic, and humid acid as binders. I wanted to get your thoughts on what do you think are the best way to detox toxins? I know it's different from for most for many people, depending on what their toxins are, whether it's heavy metals or other toxins. But I wanted to get your thoughts on just generally what are the best ways you think are best? And secondly, do you think the mini trampoline is the best form of exercise because it helps your lymphatic system? Yeah, David, thank you for that question. And literally I could talk for hours on this, but let me just try to uh, answer a few of your questions. Number one, I'm a fan of the trampoline, <clears throat> um, not just for lymphatics, but I've, um, I've seen it improve people's brain function, uh, resetting, there's something about um, repetitive movement. I've talked to eye doctors who've been able to get people with seizures to make them go away, to improve their vision through trampolines. So yes, I'm a big fan of trampolines. In terms of favorite ways to detoxify, I think I like everything that you mentioned. I, I mean, I, I would caution you if you're doing coffee enemas that the coffee you use should not be roasted because roasting coffee will produce acrylamides and then you'd be introducing toxins. But all the other uh, to you know, detoxification strategies you mentioned, I like my favorite in general terms. And it may be, you know, the, most of the people watching this may already know this, is by eating plants, the fiber in the plants will help flush out a lot of these toxins. One, one key point that I, I didn't do a good job during my presentation is many of the toxins that we're dealing with are man-made and they're fatty toxins, like these PCBs, and they have half-lives in, in our body of 10, 20, 30 years. So we're not just dealing with the toxins. Let's say we live in a moldy environment. We're not just dealing with the toxins today. We may be dealing with the toxins when we were a little boy or a little girl. Uh, or toxin, fatty toxins that were passed on to us through breastfeeding or in utero. So, uh, and, and by the way, I'm, I'm a big fan of breastfeeding, so don't don't take that away. But it's 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 hard to um, it's hard to pick just one or two detoxification strategies because what I find is when when I see patients with chronic neurologic problems, whether that's you know Parkinson's or brain fog from Lyme disease or mold toxicity, it's not just those things, it's also petrochemical toxicity. And to try to get these fatty toxins out, often you have to do a dozen different detoxification strategies, including saunas, including binders, you know, including eating lots of plants that have fiber, including doing colonics, uh, including taking um, NMN or glutathione to help 
uh, your body's natural detoxification system. So I, I hope I hope that answers that, David. Yeah, just one thing, one quick comment, what you just said. My eye doctor, my holistic eye doctor, in his blog, he did say the mini tramp helps with glaucoma. Yeah, I, I believe that. And um, as you know, glaucoma is an increased pressure in the back of the eye. So I can definitely see how it could help. But my point is the trampoline, just the whole balance thing, I've seen incredible effects in, 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 in our brain system rebalancing our whole brain system. So talking about toxins, do toxins get stored in our fat or where do they get stored? And if they do get stored in our fat, do they come out as we lose fat, as we lose weight? A hundred percent. Yes. So there, there are basically two types of toxins. There are fat, fatty toxins and non-fatty or water soluble toxins. The, the, it's much easier for the body to get rid of the water soluble toxins. So what are some examples of some water soluble toxins? Things like glyphosate or Roundup is water soluble. So that's gonna be easier to get rid of your system. Um, <clears throat> when, and you're exactly right. Let's say you have a lot of extra fat on your body and you lose fat, you lose um, weight through your fat. Um, like for example, when I did a, a water, a 10 day water fast at True North, I, I um, mobilized a lot of my visceral fat. And I'm sure I had fatty toxins stored in that visceral fat that got mobilized and pushed out during, during the fast. Um, re remind me of the question, Michael, I'm sorry. Um, well, basically was, do they get stored in your fat, which you're saying that the fatty soluble um, toxins do get stored in your fat. And then when you lose weight, do, um, do, do these toxins can come back out of those fat cells and into your bloodstream essentially? Yeah, and the, and the answer is definitely yes, Michael. And, and for those reasons, when you're losing weight, I'm, I'm all for people losing, if they have excess, uh, you know, fat, I'm all for them releasing that. The, the other important top concept is toxins can get so stored in what's called biofilm or biologic film. Bacteria in your body, whether in your bloodstream or in your mouth, forms a protective layer around it, a biologic film. And, and that's why we brush our teeth, hopefully a couple of times a day, is to, is to get rid of the biofilm in our mouth. But you can also have biofilm in your body, in your brain, in your heart, basically almost anywhere in your body, you can get this biofilm. Within this biofilm, you can have toxins. I mean, you give an example, even though it's a gross concept, especially on a Saturday morning, many of us have parasites. We've eaten um, you know, raw fish in the past, or we got bit by mosquitoes. Many of us have parasites. Many of those parasites will store heavy metals and other toxins that they will use to fight other bacteria. And so if you kill parasites, which are part of the biofilm, that can also release toxins. So before I treat patients for a lot of these um, infections, I will often remove toxins first because I know when I help them bust the biofilm using nitric oxide or other strategies, that they're gonna get a whole release of these biofilms that have toxins that built up over many, many years of their life. Thank you. Um, is the sun good or bad for us? Um, should we start, should we try to, to get outside as much as we can? There's a lot of stuff about vitamin D and, you know, but then you have sunburn where, where, where how, how do we handle the sun in a healthful way? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. So overall, I think the sun is great. You you want we're designed to be on the sun. People who are not exposed to the sun get depressed. But but you can go the opposite section side. You can go and get way too much sun exposure. So <coughs> so the way to protect against that is get a sunscreen. If you go outside, get a sunscreen that's non toxic. And what are, what are examples of non toxic sunscreens? Zinc. Zinc is not going to hurt you. But unfortunately, if you look, if you just go to your local store and buy a sunscreen, they're loaded with all these petrochemicals that are toxic. So um, I know doTERRA, there are other companies that produce safe um, sunscreens. But overall, I want you to get out into the sun. But, you know, guess what? UV radiation from sunlight is definitely aging to your skin. So you do want to have some type of blocker. And Michael, unfortunately, I find even here in Florida, I've, you know, I've, I've met roofers, carpenters who are out without a shirt, 
you know, throughout the year, getting sun all day long, they're deficient in vitamin D, it's, which is a fat soluble toxin. I can't explain why, but I think it's related to fatty toxins in our environment. So even if you're out in the sun, which I want you to be, most of us are deficient in vitamin D. Most of us need, need to supplement in vitamin D. And the way you find out is you check your level. Great. Uh, our next question is coming from Ron. Ron, please state where you're from and ask your question. I'm from Santa Cruz, California. And I appreciate your comment about hips because I worked with Dr. Robert Cathcart on his hip prosthesis and he later became an expert in vitamin C with the Linus Pauling. And one thing that happened with aging, of course, is that vitamin C levels decrease and there's a lot of deficiency in vitamin C, uh, first in elderly and secondly in hospitals where under stress, people do not get even tested to see what their vitamin C levels are. And um, so I am curious if you would say just a word about uh, what Dr. Stone called um, subclinical scurvy. Yeah, Ron, I, I agree with you. Vitamin C is a very important vitamin for many reasons, and it's a water soluble vitamin. So unlike vitamin D, you, you have to, you have to be taking it in all the time. Uh, my favorite sources of vitamin C are going to be fruits and vegetables. I will give some of my patients intravenous vitamin C if I'm trying to stimulate their immune system. But that's one of the reasons why you want to eat plants, because if you're eating plants on a regular basis, you're, you are going to be getting uh, enough vitamin C. Um, but I, I appreciate what you're saying about subclinical scurvy. And the other thing I, I see <clears throat> with patients who are mold toxic, they can't absorb the vitamin C. So um, the, the mold trichothecene toxin, black mold toxin will sit in the gut and prevent absorption. But to me, one of the important reasons why you want to eat lots of plants every single day is uh, you want to make sure that you keep your vitamin C levels. Because vitamin C is, is one of these key vitamins for the health of your immune system, frankly, every cell in your body. Great. So um, I wanted to ask you about, you, you talked about um, infrared saunas for detoxing. Is that safe to do every day? Is it something that, that you would recommend if somebody has access to an infrared sauna that they do it every day? Yeah, I, I am a fan of infrared sauna every day. I'm a fan of traditional sauna every day. I will say with infrared, one of the dangers with some of the infrared saunas is a large amount of uh, EMF radiation exposure. And the only way to check is you can get an EMF monitor or, or detector and bring it in, in with you to the sauna and just see if, if it's shielded or not. But if it is shielded, if you're not getting blasted with EMF, I'm a big fan of, of daily uh, exposure because that will improve your lymphatic system. It'll basically Im improve your microcirculation, both your capillaries and lymphatics. And it'll, it'll get you sweating. It'll get these fatty toxins moving. Great. And on the, on the other end of the temperature spectrum, um, you know, cold plunging or, or, or just even going into nature, not even when it's necessarily cold, but going into lakes and oceans, is that, is that healthy? And then also when it's cold going in and kind of getting that, that cold plunge effect, what are your thoughts on that? I love it. Yeah. Cold plunging is good. Heat is good. Alternating hot and cold is amazing. I remember doing that at Hippocrates. One of the keys is if you're going to do hot and cold, you want to end on the cold, but the, this goes back to the concept I mentioned called hormesis you're stressing your body. And I would recommend doing this every day, um, going from hot to cold. Biochemically, it sounds weird. Whether you use heat or cold, you're, you're stimulating these basic energy pathways called the heat shock protein. Who would have thought that going to a cold plunge is going to stimulate your, your heat shock protein? But they first identified that in, with heat. Um, but, but it turns out that this will improve the health of your mitochondria, which in turn will improve your energy production and your ability uh, of your mitochondria to help with detoxification. So yes, I'm a big fan if you have access to those things. So would going, like taking a hot shower and then turning it ice cold at the end, that that kind of 
um, that shock effect with that, that's beneficial. Yes, it is. I would recommend that strongly. All right, great. And our next question is coming from Mary. Mary, please state where you're from and ask your question. I am pretty local to you. I live in St. Petersburg, Florida. And my question, I don't think you've, uh, I don't know if you've answered this is about dry eye. I, I heard you talking about glaucoma, but do you have anything to help with dry eye? And also if you lose weight and your skin is how to return elasticity to your skin. Yeah. Let, let me start with the elast elasticity first. What we're finding is if we can get people to reverse their biologic age with supplements like NMN, that often the dry skin is getting better. Um, I, I'm a big fan of moisturizers um, and essential oils for doing that. Now, dry eye, I'll be, I've also, um, you know, it, it really, it depends why your eyes are dry. Right. I mean, if you've got a viral infection, then, you know, maybe an essential oil like Melissa would help. I, I'll be upfront. If I've got someone with a dry eye, I would, I would send them to uh, an eye doctor who's open to some of these holistic ideas. Right. Uh, we're going to take a question from Bin Wu. Bin Wu, please state where you're from and ask your question. Hello, good morning. Thank you for your time to give us an uh, education. I'm from the Maryland, Baltimore. My question is, I heard um, um, you said maybe it's better to eat the one day, uh, one day, uh, one meal. So um, what is good for the aging? And so what time is the best to eat this meal? Yeah, uh, Ben, great question. I, I think it's worth I don't think there's a right answer or best time for everyone. I would experiment and see what works out for you. I know personally, uh, the best thing for me is to skip breakfast and lunch and just eat a, a large early dinner. But there are other people who will eat a large meal at six in the morning and that's all they do. So what I would suggest you do is experiment <coughs> with the timing. And because obviously eating food is really dependent on your own schedule if you go to work or, or what have you. Um, I, I can see theoretically if, if you could do both, um, maybe eating first thing in the morning uh, would be better. But uh, to my mind, if you're only eating one meal a day, you're amazing. And um, it is so good for your health because here's the key concept. If you're only eating, let's say over an hour, that gives your body you know, another 23 hours a day to recover because when, not so much our audience here, but when the general public, when they eat a large fatty meal, um, that is causing damage to blood vessels. And if, if you're giving your, so, so I've, I've seen people on YouTube, you can find them, people who eat this huge, amazing meal of unhealthy food, but they're only eating it one time a day. That gives their body 23 hours to recover from all the damage that they're doing. Uh, but to go back to your, your answer, uh, or your question, I should say, um, I, I would experiment and see what works out best in, in your lifestyle. Great. And besides NMN, what are the other important nutritional supplements that, that, uh, that you recommend? I, I believe you touched a little bit on that. Yeah, I mean, I would probably give you a couple dozen, but let me just focus on the, the two. The way to remember, they both start with N. So NMN and nitric oxide, that's where I would start. You can find on my website, other things that I would look at would be uh, creatine, which is an oral supplement. I would also look at fatty 15. I would also look at... Urolithin A. I would also look at, um, well, I could go on. I mean, I, I think the other important point is instead of starting a dozen supplements all at once, start one at a time to, to know because these are powerful supplements. I will also say that I recommend if you start NMN that you also start trimethylglycine. If you start NMN, a thousand milligrams, also start trimethyl glycine, a thousand milligram. And the reason for that is when NMN gets metabolized, 
it gets, it needs methyl groups to be broken down. If you don't supply it and you're deficient, that can hurt your, um, your methylation systems in your body. But, but Michael, literally, I mean, it's, it's hard to just come up with, um, to, to tell, but, but I'm excited and I take all these supplements because I notice a difference. And, um, but again, to keep it simple, focus on nitric oxide and, 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 yep. and where, what are great sources of nitric oxide in the foods that we eat? What would you recommend? Yeah, I would recommend leafy greens. And again, I would reemphasize you want to chew and chew and chew your leafy greens because there are two places nitric oxide is produced. It's produced in the mouth by bac bacteria when you chew. It's also produced in the gut. The other trick I'll, I'll add is I would, I recommend tongue scraping because there's studies that show for people who scrape their tongue, it improves the number of bacteria that will fix the nitrogen from your nitrates that you're chewing leafy greens to produce the nitric oxide. So chewing and tongue scraping are key to increase the yield of your nitric oxide in your mouth. Okay, our next question is coming from David T. And we just have about two minutes to ask the question and answer the question. So okay. um, David. Uh, okay, I'll be really quick. Can you use the gallery test to also monitor people who are undergoing cancer treatment to make sure the treatment is effective? And secondly, have you ever heard of the grease test that gives custom um, individual plans to treat cancer based on a blood test? Great questions. And very quickly, the gallery test is not intended, and I wouldn't recommend it if you have active cancer that you're monitoring. But I definitely do recommend the grease test called RGCC. And, but there's also, there's a, a good company in this country um, that has non-traditional testing for cancer too. So yes, I definitely recommend the grease test, but I don't recommend the gallery test for people with active cancer. It's intended uh, for detecting new cancer, not monitoring, but who knows, maybe the company will come up with with a test to monitor it. But right now I like RGCC in, um, in Greece for that type of test, which, which monitors cancer stem cells in your bloodstream. Okay. And we've got, I think enough time for, for one more. Um, your thoughts on oils, are, are you for or against them? And if, if you like them, are there some that you find that are, are beneficial? Yeah. In terms of let me be clear. I'm not in favor of adding oil to your diet in general, mm -hmm. but essential oils, I'm a big fan of many of them. <clears throat> Again, that would be a whole lecture for a couple hours. Uh, my favorites would be lavender for sleep and frankincense uh, for overall anti-inflammation. But again, I could rattle off great food. And, and also uh, for, for metabolism, I'm a big fan, as I mentioned, of MetaPower meta pwr from doTERRA which is a blend of you know cinnamon and lemon and grapefruit and these others that will increase your metabolic rate and prevent the, the clinical studies now showing that it will prevent uh fat cells from growing in size okay um so with that i um, we're going to end our q a and i want to thank you and if we could please open up the uh unmute the audience thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.